This is the way. <laughs> Star Wars. Hey guys, this is my review for The Mandalorian, the first season, the show that was produced on Disney+, Plus. majority of it written and directed by John Favaro, as well as other very talented filmmakers like Deborah Chow, Taika Wahidi, and Dave Fioni. This show is literally the very embodiment of what everyone called Star Wars when it first came out. It's a space western. No, really, it's a space western. Freaking Carl Weathers gets shot and he's saved by a block of the really expensive stuff in his pocket that's straight out of a Western movie. This is the amalgamation, I would say, of the best parts in terms of its tone from Rogue One, and it includes all of the memorable aspects that we have come to know and love from the original Star Wars trilogy. This is not the Disney Star Wars. This is its own sort of ideal, all the while being a massive fan service, respectfully, as well as its own entity. Cannot applaud them more so for that. I honestly didn't think John Favaro had it in him to do this. Sure, he kind of started off the MCU, but that more so was taken on by Feige. But this, he does really well. The character of the Mandalorian made me love this show. The world building with the entire Mando creed made me love this show. It also made me like Mandalorians. Never understood the Boba Fett phenomenon. I know that he's more interesting in the books, the legends, the comics. Even as a kid, I didn't think this guy was that interesting because he didn't do anything in the original trilogy. He fell down a hole. And in all of the eight episodes, I would only say that the fifth one, the middle one, which is unfortunately directed and written by De Fioni, is probably the most pointless episode. But otherwise, it's like a good dip like this from beginning to end. The initial three episodes being about Baby Yoda, the absolute amazing pop phenomenon that's going on right now, and his connection with the Mandalorian, all the while we're still figuring out more about the character, more about his past. Then we get some kind of rando episodes, like in the fourth episode, which is 100% Seven Samurai. I'm surprised that no one made that much of a comparison to it because it's literally the Seven Samurai, and it's directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. Carly Kajina's in it too, and she's pretty kick-ass. Then there's a really boring episode. Then the sixth episode is this heist, kind of a jailbreak, literally like a Western movie. Bill Burr's in it, and he's, it kind of seems like he's on some form of morphine because he's not as energetic as I'm used to from his stand-up. I wasn't as into his character as I thought I would be considering it's Bill Burr. One of the best parts about that episode, though, is when everything starts to go topsy-turvy, Mando goes from being the hunted to the hunter, and we see just how good of a fighter he is in that episode. Then the seventh and eighth episode are obviously building up to the finale, which was a lot better than I expected it to be. Characters died, there was consequences, there was a really cool emotional moment with the TK robot, which I didn't expect. I loved its consistency with staying in this realm, keeping this sort of adult as much as you could with the PG-13 Disney product, and keeping the same love and appreciation of Star Wars that people came to know and love from the original trilogy. And I really think that this shows that John Favaro and Dave Fioni should definitely have more association with Star Wars. Maybe not Fioni as a director, maybe like as a supervising writer or a producer, which he should be. This was so much better than I expected. It had a massive influx of people watching this. This is one of the most streamed titles in history. Probably a lot of people canceled their Disney Plus accounts right after this, but they'll get it right back once season two arrives. I enjoyed every aspect of it. Even Carl Weathers with his hilarious pose like this. I couldn't take it seriously every time he's doing this stance. Mando, I have a job for you. I beat up Rocky once. Fantastic narrative, fantastic characters, great world building, an enjoyable pace, except for the middle, a fantastic final product. So my final score for The Mandalorian Season 1 is a 6 out of 7. I'm kind of curious to see what they do with the second season, considering how they did the arc of this first season. They made characters from the first five episodes almost all of them come back and have a matter in the final episode. If they keep this same creative team, it's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, this is the way. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign but we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.